Yeah, and, and the parallel I see here, of course, is just uh, exercise. You know, physical, regular physical exercise is what this voice and speech training is. Walk two miles a day. Regular exercise, such as walking, has been shown to be a key factor in reducing the risk of dementia by 60%. One reason may be that when animals go on very long walks, it is usually to seek a new, unexplored territory in which to live because they are fleeing a predator or because food has run out where they live. The brain, in, anti in anticipation of the fact that the animal is going to have to learn a lot about this new territory, releases growth factors, which act like growth-promoting fertilizer in the brain, allowing it to build connections between cells more easily as it learns. Yeah, demented. Demented. Do serious brain exercises. As we get older, the brains become more noisy. They are not as good at registering new information with clear, strong signals, and it becomes harder to retain information that was registered in a muddy way. Serious brain exercises, such as those that grew out of the work of neuroplasticity pioneer Michael Merzenich, are designed to train specific brain areas for processing sounds and images. An NIH study showed that their effects lasted 10 years and that participants got better not just at the exercises, but at using their brains in life, too. These exercises are very different from most computer brain games or those in newspapers. They are very challenging and require intense concentration. One example involves listening to consonant vowel combinations that are easily confused. That is dead on. That is just dead on oh. to what, what you're doing all the time. It, you know? Distinguishing the subtle differences between a three and a four, all of that turns out, <laughs> turns out that's good exercise for your brain. Okay. And I think it's because of the, 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 the additional sense, sensory added on, the, the auditory sense. But of course, everything he says here about listening and increasing listening, think listening and feeling, because he just is looking at it from a listening aspect. And that comes up in this next part. The vocal frequencies. And the ability the of the person speech. speaking to hear the subtle differences in their own voice. This relates directly uh, to, you know, intonation too. You know, I think, I think this mm. is, intonation is probably a real charge to you, uh, to your brain too. Then, and the ability of the person speaking to hear the subtle difference, the subtle differences in their own voice. The voice. ability of the person speaking to hear and feel the subtle differences in their own voice. The subtle differences in their own voice. The person who the has person. the rich voice has it because their ability to listen and to feel is superior, not because of their vocal cords. Carefully to what they are saying as you speak, to the sound of it, not just the content, you will refine it and energize it into a voice that charges as opposed to one that drains yourself and others. And that's it. The wow, that's a perfect advertisement for, <laughs> <laughs> for lessons, right? <sighs> and to, the, to that, you know that Arthur Lessac was 101 years old when he died. Mm. Well, and he was sure into this. And working right up to the last week of his life, overseas in Europe somewhere, you know, working. Consonant vowel. Keep using, consonant keep using vowel. good consonant energy now while you're talking. Okay. Consonant vowel combinations that are, that are easily confused. I think it, you want to you want to do something with the intonation on that. Yeah, you know, I mm -hmm. I think you definitely want to do something with consonant vowel. 
consonant vowel. Consonant vowel. Or consonant vowel. Consonant or vowel. Consonant vowel. You want to do something to make you to show that it's, you know, two separate contrast. things. Contrast. Consonant, yeah, the contrast emphasis, vowel. right. Consonant, consonant vowel, vowel combinations. Consonant vowel combinations. Yeah. That are easily confused. Uh huh. You went right, you went right from a, an uh -huh. S to a T. Confused. 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 Played at an increasingly rapid speed. As, as long as you're going to be getting the DVDs out again to play J, do the D exercises yeah. too. Do all the D. I think if you do the Ds and the DGs, you know, together, DG. that would give, because it's all part of what the problem is there, not having enough vibration. That's why I created the IML. You've looked at that, right? Off of my website, the Interactive Master Lab. Where people, where people, no. I, I can put any exercise from the DVD up there. They can stand in front of the camera, record it, and, imme and immediately upload it. Ah. For one, me coming in, and then for a local teacher to also be there. So the local teacher at that school could be the main person who's interacting with the students. And then students can also upload and interact. Mm -hmm. You can up, you upload either, do, either doing the lesson or you upload in, the, in one of those squares that you're like a guest uh, commenter. Uh. And, you, and you comment on the video that was submitted. And then somebody on the panel me or whoever picks the best and ranks it as the best and the second best, that kind of thing. <laughs> competition. Yeah, competition. To shine, right? You'd be afraid to take videos, I guess. That's the course, really. I mean, that's the, that's the you know, you've mm -hmm. got to teach people to be more um, comfortable as communicators. You've got to. Mm -hmm. Especially in a world where more and more this kind of uh, telecommunications is going to be driving everything between people. Mm. They get into it here so much, I don't think they do. But I read this also in a couple of different places, more than one place, more than two, that we're um, bi, bimodal, I think is the word I think, bimodal Bi sleep, where you have two sleep periods at night. You know, the first one may be, you know, uh, anywhere two to five, two to four hours. Then you wake up for two hours, and then you get another two to four hours. I don't know if you know this, but it turns out that that's how our ancestors slept. All, all of them, before we had lighting was the thing. Before we had electric light and everything depended on the natural 12-hour cycle, that, so it, sleep was broken up into that 12-hour thing where it was normal. And I have my own theory about this, too. Uh, I think you had to get up after four hours because the fire, you need to put fire <laughs> on You know, how often did you, you have, you can't sleep eight hours, you know, the, you wake up free, no. freezing. Somebody has to get up, but they, one article said that it was also normal to like wake up for two hours in the middle of the night for sex, to have sex, and mm. to, uh, or just to talk. Right. <laughs> Any break time? Any official break time? Is that what you're saying? No, actually, no official break time. Only a lunch break, an hour so lunch if break. Some, if somebody wanted to, in the middle of the afternoon, take 20 minutes to do yoga exercises, they they would be frowned on, frowned upon. That's officially bad. If you go to smoke, that's okay, right? <laughs> <laughs> sounds pretty good now so um try and carry over that same dynamics keep your voice nice and rich and strong all day today thinking about how it's building up new brain connections okay yeah i will thanks okay i'll see you next time see you then